Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar brought to you by Vasa ETT, eBadge and Metering and Smart International. I'm Claire Falkvane, editor of Metering and Smart International, and I'm particularly pleased to be introducing Sasha Berman, who is the Chief Dissemination Officer for Vasa ETT. As one of the people who's been intimately involved with the eBadge project over the last um, couple of years, I thought that Sasha was the best person to introduce you to the project itself and then onto the great line, uh, lineup of speakers. Before we begin, just some housekeeping issues, please. As you'll see from your screens, on the bottom left hand side, you have the option of posting questions, which we will then facilitate to the speakers toward the end of the webinar. Please rest assured that even if we don't get a chance to go through all of the questions by the time our webinar ends, somebody will get back to you and you will have um, some answers to any and all unanswered queries. That having been said, Sasha, I'd like to hand over to you. Thank you for that introduction, Claire. Um, so firstly, to briefly introduce the eBadge project to everyone, I would just say that eBadge is an uh, EU-funded research and development project within the European Commission's uh, FP7 um, framework. It is set for a lifetime of three years and it's presently in its final year, meaning we are approaching mature and final outcomes. The project is managed by a multi-stakeholder consortium including 13 different partners covering five EU member states. And it is led by the Slovenian Telecom who is here with us today and is um, going to present. The aim of the project is to uh, create a pan-European intelligent balancing mechanism for the electricity balancing markets. And uh, during this webinar here today, the speakers will firstly uh, further introduce the project to you uh, more in detail. And then we will also introduce uh, the key ICT tools, namely the Home Energy Hub and the Cloud Solution. Afterwards, um, another speaker will also mm -hmm. present uh, some concrete DSO perspectives. So what is the relevance and the value of the project coming from an DSO angle? Finally, the last speaker um, will present the business models and potential new services that eBadge can enable. So with that being said, I will hand over the word to the first speaker today, who is uh, Radovan Sernic, a senior specialist from our consortium. And uh, he is from the Slovenian Telecom, who, as I previously mentioned, is actually leading the eBadge project. Radovan has led the work on creating the Home Energy Hub and the cloud solution. So with that being said, I'll hand over the word to you, Radovan. Thank you very much, Sasha. Hi folks, my name is Radovan. I'm glad that I can present to you the presentation on the Home Energy Hub and the Home Energy Cloud. It is a device that is uh, installed in uh, homes or in uh, commercials and uh, businesses. And its uh, task is the integration with the virtual power plant system for managing power consumption in general. Webinar presentation is organized into seven sessions. In the first one, I present eBatch project uh, in a very short notice, followed by introduction to stakeholders on the electricity marketplace, especially focusing on the interaction with the virtual power plant. Concept of uh, home energy hub and cloud is presented in the third session. Information interconnection with messaging protocol is described in the next one. We discuss design and implementation of home energy hub, including the user interfacing via applications in sessions five and six. Of course, we need to conclude the session and take a snapshot of the complete, of the complete system, its operation and interaction, uh, how it's happening with all the stakeholders. A few words about the eBatch. Uh, main objective connected to Home Energy Hub of the project is to investigate the virtual power plant role as an energy balancing asset on inter-country pan-European electricity market. 
It is following actually the component development objective that led to design of home energy hub device, including the communication messaging protocol and cloud implementation that are key elements of the proposed solution for energy balancing. During the project lifetime, we have actually installed more than 100 home energy hubs into a seamlessly operating uh, energy management system um, that works uh, seamlessly with the virtual power plant software that is installed within the utilities. Innovation actions must eventually prove on the market. That is why we are also pursuing the business modeling and stakeholder uh, market analysis from the outside of the project itself. And uh, later, my colleague Steve will have some more details on that. eBatch project conceptually integrates under the information cloud umbrella several electricity market stakeholders like transmission system operators, DSOs, distribution system operators, or utilities, DSOs, market operators, electricity market simulator, virtual power plants, uh, homes, businesses, industrial users, all interconnected through cloud, and some of them uh, having installed home energy hubs. Let's take a look at stakeholders, and VPP space. A more detailed business and information exchange view of the marketplace reveals that there, are, there can be more than a single entity of each type on the marketplace. For example, several DSOs, and we can have also so-called microgrid providers or energy services providers for auxiliary services. It's of paramount importance for all of them to speak the same language when they are exchanging the information. A tool for information exchange is, in our case, so-called message bus concept that we have developed on the project. This is the enabler of secure communication among all the stakeholders, much like the HTTP protocol is in the Internet web domain. In the next session, we will take a look at the concept of the home energy hub and its connection within the cloud. We are taking a look at the modified picture published by AI, uh, um, AIE. It's a helicopter view of the electricity system from production to consumption that reveals two important facts. We have actually parallel operation of electrical information infrastructures and including the distributed energy generation facilities at end users or, or commercial um, and industrial um, users. If we have such users that also generate the electricity, we call them consumers. Each user or consumer can be equipped with home energy hub, and multiple of these are interconnected with the message bus into a single centralized information system that we call home energy cloud. This notion of centralized electricity and communication hub very nicely describes actually the problem space where the home energy hub resides and operates. Uh, you can note uh, in the middle of the, of the uh, slide the vertical demarcation point uh, and uh, the, the green circle where actually home energy hub is placed within the smart home. One of the uh, functions of the smart grid that eBatch investigates and is implemented within control center is virtual power plant. IC has defined actually a similar standardized view, similar hub, and again note the smart home site 
that is under user jurisdiction, whereas the smart meter is part of the utility and under the DSO responsibility. Also, various information interfaces are possible within smart home. We implement in Home Energy Hub a simple power load on off control, direct control of our loads. Let us take a look in the next session or at the messaging concept in general or on our project. Um, we are presenting here a general view of the stakeholders on the electricity marketplace and investigate actually the information exchange between all of them. For the purposes of the virtual power plant, we have information flows from consumers to virtual power plant provider or operator or to the distribution system operator if virtual power plant is part of the DSO operation. Then we have independent flows, information flows also between the DSOs, TSOs, and of course, uh, they are all connected to uh, energy exchange or the market operator. In our proof of concept design of pan-European marketplace, we have a triple of DSO, TSO, and market operators, and home energy hub participating within VPP in each country. Uh, in United States, the, there is an open NDR initiative, so-called, that is defined for the purposes of demand response, the communication protocol based on HTTP or XMPP messaging that interconnects uh, so-called virtual top nodes and virtual end nodes. Uh, even some recent uh, legislation in California demands uh, open IDR be implemented for all new commercial buildings. In the European uh, Union, IC is pushing more 61850. That will define similar messaging. <clears throat> in eBatch, we have decided for a robust open source messaging based on queues. That is called RabbitMQ. It operates over TCP IP and is secured by itself. Also, a specific content within message can further be hashed with, for example, um, SH3 uh, algorithm. All, all exchange packets are timestamped so that consumer, VPP, and market operator chain can synchronize actions of demand side management. On top layer, we implement several applications, and of course, uh, VPP in particular. Uh, we have also implemented user interaction applications via HTTP over TCP. On the physical layer, of course, almost any type of the communication is, su is supported, uh, but we prefer in our project uh, wireless LTE 4G communication. A more detailed view into the RabbitMQ implementation exposes Straightforward JSON type of uh, types of messaging for information coding on one side, and on the other side, RabbitMQ Exchange that is situated in the cloud. Let us take a look at the messaging of the end-to-end -end chain between stakeholders. There are several levels of communication implemented in RabbitMQ exchange within centralized cloud. Market operator is representing energy exchange. It communicates specific messages to transmission system operator that in turn communicates other specific messages to distribution system operator and virtual power plant entity. While they negotiate VPP participation and activation actions on the energy exchange. Virtual power plant then interrogates and negotiates with home energy hubs for multiple consumers, either for energy curtailment or production from local energy sources like photovoltaic plants, let's say, for a fixed time period, for example, two hours. The whole messaging process on all three levels enables VPP operation as a balancing asset on tertiary reserve energy market. Since you have the pan-EU notion 
of marketplace with several market operators. They also communicate with the same messaging protocol. As, a, as an example, we can take a detailed look into specific uh, messages between Home Energy Hub and Virtual Power Plant. In the first type is uh, uh, where VPP interrogates Home Energy Hub, and the second type describes how the Home Energy Hub responds. In the next session, we will take a look at Home Energy Hub design and its implementation. We will put forward some simple objectives like direct integration with the virtual power plant and operation for residential or commercial consumers. So these were the, the basic objectives while designing the Home Energy Hub. Of course, we must take a giant leap from um, from Ferrari's type of energy metering that is um, not supporting any information communication channel. So we must come into actually into the smart grid domain. Let us put down a short list of requirements for virtual power plant ready home energy hub design. It must be real time secure, enable information exchange between Home Energy Hub and uh, VPP. Since smart meters are usually information closed system under utility control, we want to have autonomous separate energy metering with fine grain resolution, for example, 15 seconds. This will greatly enhance user interaction since he will get instant feedback response to power control, load control, on-off actions in his or on his personal application user interface. We envision that in the mid-term, smart meter standardization will enable also the information exchange with other home devices, thus allowing the home energy hub to transform into information hub for virtual power plant and user interfacing. Home energy hub, as it is implemented, is also reporting energy flows to utility or to VPP in real time. And this is something that today's home smart meters and supporting uh, back-end infrastructure is usually not uh, equipped to do. To realize real-time information exchange from consumers to virtual power plants and utilities and further up the chain to market operators, we must design and implement new type of information communication access to home energy hub and interconnection among other stakeholders as, as well as seamlessly integrate everything together into information secure system. Our preferred mode of information access is either 4G mobiles, that is LTE, or high bandwidth uh, DSL or fiber connection at consumer locations. Each consumer home energy hub is connected to a physical link into dedicated mobile or fixed private network under telecom operator control. Telecom operators IP MPLS communication infrastructure interconnects also the VPP utility as well as other stakeholders via virtual um, private networks with our messaging bus protocols. The cloud infrastructure that operates message infrastructure with databases is also part of the telecom infrastructure, thus in secure environment. Equivalently, it can be also situated within the utility. And we have finally come to the physical implementation and installation of the home energy hub. Its installation and placement in home or uh, within commercial buildings. The picture shows the energy distribution box with the installed home energy hub in the center. This is much different view compared to Ferrari's meter and classical circuit breakers. Home energy hub is in the top center of the installation. It communicates to virtual power plant via integrated modem with external antenna, or alternatively, we can have external modem 
connected via uh, wired Ethernet or wireless Wi-Fi, but that is not shown on the picture. On top of the home energy hub box, we can see AC current measurement sensors. In this case, Rogowski coils, or alternatively, current transformers or Hall effect sensors. Main circuit breaker is on the left, and other circuit break breakers on the lower left-hand side of the installation. Next to them are power relays for or on and off control of selected power loads. Industrially designed home energy hub, specifically for commercial consumers, is built around industrial grade embedded computer. This is very important. It implements communication with large power loads in software and uh, is using the same kind of messaging with virtual power plant with the same kind of RabbitMQ protocol. Installation is similar as presented already. It's interesting to observe some statistics of power loads that we have encountered on the field trial. And uh, you can see that we can uh, selectively control some of the loads very easily with our on-off control from the home energy hub. In this session, we will investigate user engagement through applications and web interfaces. Until now, we were discussing cases of prosumer automatic load control from a virtual power plant or utility to achieve predetermined energy objectives. For example, power curtail curtailment for the next two hours. On the other hand, user can also manually control its load to achieve his own goals. For example, operate appliances during lower tariff uh, of energy consumption. We achieve basic user engagement through application interaction with either mobile devices or web browser or even IPTV. The key is simplicity of operation that will not bother presumer and actually invite him to engage with his power loads often enough to realize energy consumption benefits. Let's, uh, let's speak about lower energy electricity bill. We have actually iterated several designs of user interface on Android operating system for smartphones or tablets. For example, total consumption or, or instantaneous power is shown with simple gauge. Such readout is very comprehensible and very quick. Mode of operation can be set to manual under uh, user control. It, it's shown on the right-hand side or to automatic under VPP control or to others. On the lower right-hand side, each load that is attached is shown with horizontal bar. And the uh, basic design has not changed much. Just graphical elements were adjusted to reflect modern GUI design principles. Let's say graphs were added for different time periods, from one day, seven days, one month, or a year. It's interesting to note on the right-hand side graph that shows the year period, the downslope of power consumption when changing actually from winter to summer uh, to summer for residents that use heat pumps for house heating. For web design, we have deliberately selected a bit different uh, GUI designs, also due to larger screen sizes, where uh, we have tackled users with uh, potentially uh, more than one home energy hub. And here is the example with uh, user three, uh, with three energy hubs at different locations, and he can observe all three of them at the same time and uh, loads uh, with mini gauges showing present power loading. In the web design case, uh, single load, load behavior tracking can be much smoother and detailed with horizontal and vertical mouse trigger zooms. Let's take a look at some of them. 
So the vertical zoom, the horizontal zoom, um, Well, uh, at the end, we must somehow sum up uh, the, the system, how the system is composed. Let us take, therefore, a consolidated look at already described building blocks and systems and how this all fits together. Our eBadge developed home energy, uh, home energy hub devices installed at consumer premises, either residential or commercial. It runs under open source Linux operating system, in our case, Debian distribution. Home Energy Hub hardware is either custom or uh, open-based uh, Raspberry Pi design. Communication in secure environment is geared towards um, virtual power plant and is based on the message queuing protocol or ABTMQ as already mentioned. Multiple home energy hubs within utility power grid are connected through this secure communication uh, interface to central cloud that is housing the Revit MQ exchange. This Revit MQ exchange interconnects all stakeholders at the same time of any type and they communicate with the same messaging protocol. For our energy balancing system, Virtual power plant software is the key element. Message contents exchanged by, be, between uh, stakeholders is saved in database within secure environment, either in uh, telecom or the utility. One arm is connected to a third party interface block with some custom JavaScript software implemented in OJS or uh, web server like uh, Nginx that accesses databases and communicates with other third parties, parties via known API and HTTP protocol. Such arrangement is the enabler for so-called data democratization in smart grids and attracts into ecosystem other parties or new types of stakeholders, also those that do not speak RabbitMQ protocol. Typical example is electric vehicle charging station operator that may already have developed its own web-based application. It can be seamlessly interconnected with our third-party software interface block via the API exposure. Basically, we can strike a balance and trade some specific, almost closed stakeholder marketplace interconnected with, it, with secure but not so widespread protocol like RabbitMQ for a well-known widespread HTTP web protocol that any web API developer can interface with. The bridge between them is within telecom or utility secure environment. Data democratization is thus achieved. As mentioned already, as we are providing the open interfaces uh, to third parties, user can also choose to show his own data from home energy hubs to open a third part party provided buildable dashboards like uh, shown here, Exocide. Or of course, we can also offer the uh, notification via Twitter as it was implemented on our on our system. Finally, we must not forget about the remote manager, management of the home energy hub devices at consumer locations. That is also the task for some of the open source software that was implemented. Speaking of added value services and data democratization, it is very instructive to discuss shortly what may be the services offered on the marketplace by any provider. Service marketplace can be partitioned into services for data communication transport, for data storage, and upper layer services that act upon this data to produce added value. The most obvious of the latter is virtual power plant operator that is today integrated within utility as a profit center. A whole new market is going to open 
for IoT devices, so Internet of Things devices, of which Home Energy Hub is a typical member. We were discussing cloud implementation of Revit MQ and databases, so as trusted cloud provider, either telecom or any ISP or utility can fill the gap. Discovering possible uses for gather data from multiple field installed home energy hub with big data analytics algorithms will realize new insights and bring most added value and open up opportunities for new types of players on energy marketplace. This work was performed within our e partnership and is a joint accomplishment of several industrial partners. Thank you for listening. Ursula? Yes. So good afternoon, everybody. So I will uh, uh, I will present the, the 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 view of the DSO, the view of us uh, to the project and to the whole concept. So uh, I will start uh, with uh, energy efficiency because we see that energy efficiency, which is one of our aims, is very tight, somehow connected to the demand response. So uh, what are we as the DSOs facing every day? So we are talking about the current situation. So we would like to see that our grid will operate on an optimal way. What does it mean? So if I make a, a, just a simple, uh, a simple expression in words, I mean that, that uh, the grid will in peak hours uh, have an opportunity that some consumers will decrease their consumption. And then the second uh, thing is that, that uh, in our country or uh, in, I think that in most all over the Europe, the existing uh, grid connections are over dimensioned. That means that I at my home, if I switch on all my devices, will in very rare cases make uh, the overload of the possible power. So the main question is for us, uh, how to enable the, the higher power capacity on an existing grid? And the Electro Liblana is, is, is looking for solutions. So um, we, we have an internal uh, project uh, called uh, Development of Smart Grid Spaces. So this is one uh, possibility. And the other possibility, we, we have some experience, we, we've got some experience years ago, so the solution is in load management. And we know as a, as a, as an owner as an owner of the virtual power plant that energy, that load management is very uh, tight uh, with the demand response and uh, why more because we are the owners and we are the investors in some electric quicker recharging stations totally public recharging stations and we know that in, in if in few year, years will happen that we will we will be facing with a spread of the uh, of the electric transport that we have to be able to manage this power hmm. so uh, if, if, I, if I put myself into the position of the DSO and if I want to be kind of, kind of, kind of a, um, advisor for my end customers because uh, my, uh, my obligation is even 
to to teach the the end customer how to become more efficient regarding the electricity. So uh, I have to to answer some question. Are the existing net uh, usage fees enough uh, enough uh, stimulative to to enable uh, that the end consumers became more efficient? No, we we think not. Then, um, uh, what would happen if the price for the net usage will depend of the quality of the electricity of the of the actual position of the connection point? Uh, and uh, usually, the extension of the of the existing grid is just calculating on the basis of the power needs. So, um, if I'm building up a new house, so uh, I I calculate the 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 power of the of the connection for my house, and this is the power which which would I need in next few years. And we think that energy efficiency must include energy management and, of course, for example, renovation or new investment in more efficient devices. Both these, both these uh, services or uh, tools together can lead to results. And why? If we, if we take together a look, here is a, my own load profile of, of my consumption. Here is presented one day, so 24 hours. And if you, if, you, if you look more in detail, so during the night when the price is lower, uh, I, I switch on my dryer, my washing machine, my dishwasher and those appliances which which are bigger uh, which are bigger uh, uh, which have bigger installed power so meaning uh, they they uh, present for me uh, higher costs uh, in cases if I would run them during the high tariff so and uh, the red uh, the red line shows me my consumption uh, in times when uh, the electricity is uh, is uh, more expensive, so so called high tariff, and uh, using the uh, the energy management tools, I can, for example. Uh, switch off my dryer for a few minutes or to uh, move the consumption of my dryer. For example, instead of uh, start running it at 4 o'clock in the morning, for example, why not to start him at 1 o'clock? And just uh, with the help of being a partner at eBatch product project, uh, here are some of the main reasons why do we find this project uh, uh, somehow uh, necessary, uh, or uh, that this project might cover some needs of us of ours. So we have now the opportunity or the possibility to make a real research of energy management at the real customers because, as Radovan told, they are installed more than 100, actually 120 systems. Then, uh, uh, in the project, a simple system for, uh, um, uh, with the possibility of very quick installation has been developed. And also, our customers, which, uh, which took the participation at the pilot, they've got the access to the smartphone application, and they, 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 have, they can have a view about their consumption. Uh, 
I think that as a DSO, we might to propose here some more next steps. For example, uh, we we have to we have to we have to analyze uh, what the what the benefit uh, will bring better price for the electricity. I mean for the end customers, of course. So uh, we can measure uh, their willingness to participate. And, of course, uh, we think that we have to look around the Europe for similar projects which are already running. Yes, we, uh, as a pilot in this eBatch project, we are focusing or we are facing with a, with a, with a specific environment here in Slovenia. No? So, as I told you, what can I see as an end, end customer? So, I see my consumption. Here is my temporary power, which I'm using, for example, just now in this very moment. Here, I can see the historical data. And here, what is the one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most important information for me as an end customer that I can see on or I can see here the consumption of particular devices which I want to have under control. So all this information together is this added value of this uh, eBatch project. And why? Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. So, for the first time, our end customers will uh, see or uh, can see the, uh, the consumption data so summarized so what the, I mean the, the, the same data as they usually can see on the meter and as I told the separately uh, data so the consumption for each load or for each device at their homes and what is the benefit here in this uh, system for the DSO? We will have the controllable loads because uh, as uh, Radovan, um, uh, as Radovan uh, uh, explained just a few minutes ago, so there is a connection between the end customers in between is the virtual power plant and uh, on the other side is the, the operator of the power plant. And for example, the market can tell the operator of the virtual power plant uh, to make an activation. What I mean with activation, for example, uh, this should be a signal which will, uh, for example, disconnect a few loads on the grid which will say yes, so which will be available, and the, 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 the whole power on, at the particular part on the grid will decrease. Uh, and the application itself, what I want to expose just, uh, just on, as a, one of the most important um, uh, benefits from the, from the project is that uh, if a customer, or I might be even the customer, if I can see my consumption, so I will just, uh, just uh, because of this information, uh, behave more efficient. So Electro Ljubljana uh, has many year experience. And, for example, only with the installation of the smart meters, the consumption at the end customers, meaning the households, decreased for average 5%. And why do we find of uh, 
uh, the, uh, the, the integration of demand response service also important because we are uh, we are uh, a part of the tertiary reserve in Slovenia, so we offer the capacity for the tertiary reserve to our transmission system operator and even what we are thinking so for the future uh, because we are we are uh, we are uh, developing the smart grids so we can uh, discover the critical grid areas or we can find the critical grid areas and with the tool of demand response we can somehow solve these voltage drops or, uh, or a rise of the voltage. So, as told before, the eBadge will also enable demand response and comparison into the market rules because uh, now we are facing also with the, with the lack of legislation uh, regarding the demand response, especially in Slovenia. Then uh, we, we might get good experience, good collaboration, because uh, there will be running uh, pilots uh, on the level of three countries, so on the, at the international level. And, of course, as told before, that we have, uh, that we see a good opportunity that new services for ad customers might be developed. And now, uh, uh, as even um, mentioned before, that we are the owners and uh, the managers of our own electric vehicles infrastructure. So we have some recharging station. We are the managers of these recharging stations. And we learned in some other or foreign project uh, or um, the, the projects we've been, we've been running uh, in, during the last year that we can manage the recharging process of the electric vehicle. So, uh, uh, being capable of the management of the recharging process of the electric vehicle uh, together with, uh, with, uh, with the services of virtual power plant, we think that there is a good solution to, to, to operate, to, to, to lead our grid into the operation of uh, energy efficiency and uh, higher uh, stability. So thank you very much. Okay, Ursula, thank you so much for, those, for that lovely presentation. Radovan, thank you as well. That was really, really very interesting. Um, we have some uh, questions and I thought that maybe it would be a good idea for us to take some of those questions now. I'm sure that some of you have been waiting to, to hear the answers. So uh, Radovan, for you, who can control the loads? Is that only the prosumer or is the DSO also able to do so? Uh, there are actually several modes of operation in general. Um, uh, of course, we started the project with the uh, virtual power plant only control, so the utility. Uh, afterwards, we added also the the user uh, control, and then basically somehow in the future, utilities and users uh, will will need to make uh, an arrangement. So, who will be the first controller uh, of the end devices? Uh, but the capability of home energy hub and, and, and the software is now uh, open so that uh, if the user decides under manual control, then he controls. If it decides automatic control, then this means that the control is relinquished to the virtual power plant. 
Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, Ursula, for you, uh, a question here is how is load disaggregation made? Are all the home devices smart or do you install sensors into each of the loads that you would like to control, such as dishwashers or dryers or, or such like? Hmm? Yes, this is a good question. Uh, well, uh, this is a pilot and actually the devices are not smart yet. So we are able to disconnect the devices which are connected in our house on the same line, okay? This is the first step of approach. Yes, in the future when the devices might be smart, then we can, of course, make it off uh, automatically uh, using the application. Yes, but uh, uh, in the case of my home, I've, uh, I have already installed some kind of, of a smart fuses. So, uh, and uh, thanks to this system, I can, I can, uh, I can, I can have this management of my loads being enabled even now. Okay. Okay. Um, then there was a question for you, Ursula, which. I think was probably asked a little bit tongue in cheek, but I, it does lead on to a, perhaps a more serious question, and that was, how did the laundry get from the washing machine into the dryer at four o'clock in the morning? Now, obviously, the person who asked this question didn't literally yes. mean you to answer that. Yes, but it does. You know, it does beg the yes. question: what what yes, do you I can answer. foresee in terms of <laughs> in, in, in terms of behavioural change that's needing to be driven? Yes. You know, um, uh, well, if I do not prepare the, 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 the laundry uh, in the washing machine and the laundry and the other laundry in the dryer, so the, the, the laundry won't walk by itself, of course. But mm -hmm. I usually, every evening, prepare both machines for the operation, okay? And if my machines are prepared, so when I go to sleep, I do not mind when these machines will start to work. What I expect from these both machines is that the laundry is washed or dried. That's all, okay? Was that clear enough? Okay. I guess as well as, as, as homes become more automated, we'll probably see a lot more... Uh, smart devices coming up that will support, um, uh, who knows, maybe even laundry that puts itself into the, into the dryer. Um, you can use run compact devices, you know. So if you, if you start washing process, then you can, uh, then after the washing, it's automatically started the, the drying process. So you can buy even such a device. It's not so expensive. So you can get... But you know, the, the drying process is a little bit, um, it's not so good as if you have two separately machines. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Radvan, for you, I have a question, and that was, um, how do you see the future role of the telecoms as, or telecoms providers as market facilitators through data liberalization and management? Well, uh you, you see, uh, smart grids. It's uh, it's actually the, the name is composed of two very interrelated words. So the smartness comes from the information exchange, and the, the grid comes uh, from the you know power exchange, uh, electricity, if you like. So w what we see in general is that telcos and utilities can work hand in hand, you know, uh, to achieve this. So each one is best uh, in its own on its own field. And uh, we somehow see that we can actually provide and assist utilities in uh, proliferating, you know, new energy services, if you like, uh, for, for the lower end cost to the user uh, at the end of the day. So we are putting uh, as telcos ourselves and our uh, ICT infrastructure to the use of the utilities uh, for the smart grid purposes. So this would somehow be the idea. Okay. Um, in, because we are 
um, getting to the point where we are, are, are very shortly going to be running over time. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to ask that we cut the questions here. We will hopefully, if we have some time at the end of the webinar, be able to answer a couple more of them. But in the meantime, uh, Stephen, if I could hand over to you so that you could uh, do your presentation for everybody. All right. Yeah, Claire, thanks. Um, so, hi, hello. I'm Steve from Vasa ETT. I'm specialized in um, utility marketing, customer engagement, and business model development. And, and basically, we're looking at how we bring the innovations to the energy market and, and how to engineer the growth for the new products or, or service offerings. I've worked on a number of European and international projects um, related to smart grid and smart city. And, and basically, for, for the eBadge project, um, what we're trying to do is to bring a new and holistic business model and taking into account the different um, perspectives from the stakeholders within the market. Um, so the overall goal of, for the eBadge uh, business model development is, is to integrate uh, the different perspectives, as I just mentioned. So how to do that? First of all, we use a, a very concrete uh, business model development tool at the business model canvas. And then we would ask each participant to make their own business model um, based on their role or how they participate in the uh, balancing market. And after that, we would aggregate the, we would look at uh, the, the value proposition, the cost, and then the, uh, the benefits that they could get out of this uh, uh, market. And then we would uh, aggregate the different business models all together and just to uh, identify or create a business model that bring a mutual benefit that could benefit all the partners that are within this market. So that's how we call it the co-creation of a business model and values. All right, um, I'd like to give you a brief look at the, this is one of the case uh, from the aggregator or the service provider view, which is also a kind of uh, traditional, uh, very typical view. Uh, if there is a VPP aggregator or a, or, or a, a service provider, and for them, um, basically, what they could offer to the market uh, are, if you look at the middle of the slides, are the value propositions. Um, so basically, they would they would be able to offer the energy market um, flexibility. Uh, that means giving the uh, available flex flexible capacity on the market. And, and to uh, counterbalance the increasing share of the, the generation uh, resources in transition towards a uh, low carbon economy. And, and after that, another one would be optimizing the energy markets. And of course, uh, they would also be able to support the grid infrastructure. Um, so the, the aggregated resources can, can act like a power plant to help the grid to stabilize, uh, stabilize or, or curtail the increasing power consumption. And of course, there's also the part that uh, for the integration of distributed uh, generation, which is very important uh, for the grid today and tomorrow. Um, and furthermore, a, the, the aggregator could also offer uh, the services to the distribution system operators and, and help them optimize the grid in investments in the uh, infrastructure or, or smooth the load curve uh, in case there's a critical event. And at last, um, what they could do is to trade on the energy market. So basically, the aggregator, um, they could market or trade this uh, a flexible capacity on the wholesale energy market and they're able to uh, um, optimize the consumption sometimes for the next day. So the aggregator can actually trade capacity on the day ahead market and, and probably take advantage of the, the price difference by shifting the consumption for a lower price hours. Mm, and after that, we would be looking at um, how these value propositions 
uh, would mean to different other uh, other players in in the market. So basically, uh, who are their customer segments? So first of all, um, the customers could be the energy retailers, and of course, the as the <coughs> we've had the presentation before, of course, the DSOs and TSOs, and the service would uh, would be also good for for the ge generators uh, for them. To be able to combine the the flexible capacities with renewable generation as well as well as the traditional generation um, in order to balance the system. And at last, um, another uh, interesting customer segment would be the smart grids, uh, smart cities in the in the future. So at the application service could actually enable the cities to engage the local generation and, and consumption units. Some probably uh, electrical vehicles and energy storage or other uh, resources within the grid. Um, then, so for for this to happen, we, we need to look at how does the aggregator or service provider to kind of maintain a good customer relationship. So how they do business with their their customers and and generally um, the aggregators could act as an intermediary intermediary uh, between the markets or the, the power system participants and the end consumers. Um, the relationship with these stakeholders can actually take very different forms, ranging from a strategic partnership to a service delivery model and the actually the uh, aggregators role. Uh, among all these would be to establish a communication channels uh, for better service delivery. Then we can go to the channels, which is down there. It shows that uh, for the eBadge VPP, the the proposition would be to have a VPP uh, management platform. So how the service is delivered is is basically through the, this uh, eBadge service platform. And on the left hand side of the business model we could we could see uh one important thing is to have the key resources. So in order to provide the, the VPP service, uh what are the resources or the capabilities that's that's required. Um for example, uh the flex flexibility knowledge uh the aggregator uh, has to be able to understand the different consumption patterns and that is needed to target their customers. And they should be able to know how to procure or get those uh, uh, flexibility or uh, extra capacity from their customers. Of course, uh, the aggregator should have a better understanding of the market knowledge and, um, and also be able to provide this kind of uh, market um, access, uh, especially when we talking about when we're talking about the smaller customers uh, who do not really have an access to the market, um, the VPP aggregator would be able to provide them with this market access. And when we're looking at the the partner network, so we could basically see there are different um, partners as well, such as retailers, such as um, energy market traders, or or even the um, consumer communities, um, and of course, to allow everything to happen, they would really need a, a technical infrastructure, uh, which could include the uh, communication or software and hardware uh, providers. Then we would need to look at the, the cost structure um, for this business model. Generally, for an aggregator, they would have some fixed capital uh, investment cost, and they're of course a variable cost, um, uh, ICT communication cost, and another thing to point out is is the sharing of the the revenue with their uh, customers, um, and for the revenue part, from apart from the direct revenue. Um, they could generate from uh, balancing the market. They would also be able to get uh, additional benefits, such as uh, maybe a maybe they could help the retailers to attract and and retain their existing customer base. Um, in in other sense, they they would kind of create a new benefit for the retailers, and 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 then 
and to develop a better partnership with them. And another thing, it's always important, is the environmental benefits. And apart from the um, aggregator or the service provider's perspective, we're also uh, looking at other perspectives in the market. So uh, we took a really broader view. So we are actually assuming in this on this slide, you can see that uh, we're taking the consumer and consumer as an active party in the market. So we assume that uh, what if um, in the scenario that the market uh, would have a consumer or consumer community, they they actively participate in the market. So in that in that way, uh, not necessarily there is an aggregator, but the community itself could um, provide a service and and act it as a um, as a, a kind of a balancing provider. And, and in that sense, of course, uh, in the current market, there are a lot of technologies and there are a lot of resources these customers or consumers um, they won't be able to provide. But we just uh, uh, put a assumed scenario there to see what, to make this happen. Then uh, what kind of capability or resources that's needed? So um, for the value proposition part, it, it is pretty similar to um, to the aggregator uh, business model. Of course, the aggregator would have another uh, dimension, such as providing the uh, market access. And in this case, since the the consumer or consumer are already connected to the market, so uh, that's really not part of the story. And and for uh, who would they would they target to? So uh, of course, as mentioned before, uh, retailers, DSOs, or or aggregators, or or maybe other service providers. Um, generally, we can think that the customers or um, the consumers or consumers they would have their usage data. So if they share that through a, a platform, then other uh, service providers, they could use that data and to create more services to the customers. Um, then we're looking at the um, customer relationships and, and basically uh, for the consumer and consumer uh, community, what they really need is to have a uh, uh, interface. So now probably the aggregator in, in the real sense, the probably the aggregator is the real interface that connects the, the consumer uh, the community to the other side of the market. But in the future, um, they could probably create or, or, or have their own interface, for example, through the VPP management uh, web portal. And, and as that's mentioned in the, in the channel part, and, and for the key resources and key partners. So in these parts, actually, uh, a lot of these um, technologies, uh, are uh, they can be produced or made by the customers, but uh, somehow uh, the customers could acquire or maybe get it through a, a service contract. For example, uh, if we would have the uh, home energy hub, uh, home energy hub provided to the customers, um, or the communication uh, such as the mobile devices for the customers to control their devices and and there could be the energy storage so the customers or the, the consumers they would install um, their own storage uh, at home to uh, to save the energy and, and of course there could be other uh, optional devices for controlling and automation and for the key, key partners to uh, allow the uh, consumers and consumers. Um, there could be uh, other. They could have partners um, such as energy service providers, um, and probably the telco companies to provide the communication um, technology and infrastructure, and probably the and of course also the EPP platform provider and the community level aggregators or, or maybe community themselves. So uh, probably not by individual, but at a community level, uh, there should be a kind of um, maybe a, a smaller organization or uh, just, uh, just another uh, aggregator to put everybody together and to provide the capacity to the market. So for the cost structure, um, for the consumers or consumers, of course, they would have fixed and variable costs. Um, for example, if they need to invest 
uh, in the energy storage or maybe a solar panel. And uh, of course, there there could be if they're really going to provide the service to the market, then uh, there could be the bidding cost for using the platform, and uh, and also ICT cost uh, would be another important part of it. Um, and for the revenue part, we actually identified that uh, there are financial rev rewards or, or mandatory rewards as it is already now provided by the aggregator. But there could be other non-financial rewards and, 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 and benefits, um, especially for the um, end consumers. Um, because sometimes these consumers communities are not driven purely by uh, by uh, financial reverse. So, for example, um, they could be driven by showing how they have protected the environment or maybe um, having some social reverse showing uh, part of or being part of the community. They're trying to uh, do their part um, to make the environment better. So that could be um, a, a really differentiated reverse. And while we're aggregating, so here on, on this slide, uh, it shows the result of aggregating the consumer and telco perspective. So the, the yellow um, highlighted parts are actually from the, the telco's perspective. Um, for example, you can, you can see that after integrating uh, what the consumer's uh, business model is and, and what the telco could provide for this market, uh, it, it will look slightly different and um, sometimes even more specific like the uh, the channel. There could be IPTV channel or, or set box. And, and for the key resources, then um, there, there would be the eBatch cloud hosting and data transport end-to-hand -end communication solutions um, provided to enable this uh, whole infrastructure and 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 also the um, the telco could also act as a um, customer segment. So in this way, actually, telco could potentially become a um, energy retailer. So they could act, um, provide the energy at the same time. They would probably need um, the balancing capability. Uh, and from the consumers. All right. All right. Just to wrap up, um, here are a few key points regarding the business model. So first of all, um, this aggregated business model, will, what the aim is to provide a really holistic view of how each uh, different players operate in the in the balancing market. So comparing to the traditional view of just looking at uh, if we are having a aggregator in the market and how the business would look like, we are trying to look at looking at uh, different part. If there are so many parties involved in this market, and each of them would have different sets of uh, resources, skills, capabilities, knowledge, then how do we aggregate all of them and try to achieve um, the best benefit for 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 um, all of them? And and so. As mentioned, the, the value proposition in different uh, for different business models, there are a couple of value propositions. So they are not really targeted only for one customer segment, but sometimes one uh, value proposition could be targeted for a couple of or for only one participant. And at last, as I also mentioned before, by creating this business model. Uh, we're, we're trying to have a more, much more broader view of how um, the eBatch VPP uh, could bring the value. So, in other sense, we're now looking at the local ma maximization, which is just to uh, maximize the the interest or the value of the aggregator, but to look at how we can uh, have this global maxima that we can create uh, the best or the highest values for all the parties that's involved in this market. And I think that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for, um, uh, for your listening. Fantastic, Stephen. Thank you so much for that. Um, I really appreciate the time that you and Ursula and Radovan have spent uh, sharing this experience with us. Um, 
Sasha, would you like to give us just a short roundup on the discussions and on the project? Yeah, uh, sure. So, um, first and for all, thank you to all the attendees who were here uh, during the webinar, and also uh, thank you to Metering for hosting this uh, webinar. On behalf of the eBadge Consortium, we of course appreciate this. Um, as a final wrap-up of this, I would just like to say to all the attendees that we will, of course, be sending out um, all the presentations so that you will have them. And, um, and I would also just invite you, in case uh, you would like further information about the eBadge project, to visit the project website, which is uh, eBadge-FP7.eu. We will, of course, also write the email address and contact information and everything in the follow-up email so that you may get in touch in case you have further questions or otherwise and you can get in touch with us. Finally, I would just like to say um, that the project is going to be completed around uh, Christmas, meaning we will have the final outcomes soon. And we will be sharing them with everyone at a workshop in uh, European Utility Week in uh, Vienna in November. So we would, of course, like to extend an event invitation to all the attendees here. And with that, I think I will pass the word back to you, uh, Claire, and say uh, thank you for a good webinar. Thank you, Sasha. And thank you to everybody that has attended today. I think that you um, will agree that it's been a really interesting presentation. I think that the developments within the utility sector going forward are exciting and very stimulating. And I, for one, am very excited to see what's going to happen as, as the sector of ours develops. Um, as Sasha said, we will be sending out um, some information with regards to the on-demand capability for the website. And we will be featuring some of the other elements of the eBadge project in upcoming editions of Metering International. So please make sure that you are looking out for the next two editions of Metering and Smart Energy International where you'll be able to find some more information on eBadge and, about, and on the project and how it's been going. So from me, Claire Falkvane, the editor of Metering International, thank you so much for joining us and have a good evening. Bye.